Let's find out more about him and some of the other business that could be done from the Athletics Gym football expert, Seb Stafford Bleu. Hi, Seb. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good, good thank, thank you. you. Those in the know in German football are, are citing this as a as a good signing. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I think uh, I think one thing that was very clear last season is that uh, without Endo, Stuttgart would have been relegated. He was absolutely essential. Wonderful ball winner. I'd say he's probably amongst the very best in, in German football. Really kind of energetic defensive screener right at the base of the midfield. And it's also one of the things you hear most often from former teammates, current teammates you speak to. Terrific professional, really well-liked person. Uh, yeah, just a, a lot of admiration for him. And I... I think in the context of what Liverpool might have done this summer with obviously 100 million pound euro transfers discussed and Moses Caicedo and Romeo Lavia, it might seem a little bit disappointing, but I don't think there's any reason to be underwhelmed. He's a he's a terrific player. You can see him being a bit of a cult hero at Enfield, can you? Yeah, I think so. It's it's funny, isn't it? Because it, well, that, the idea of cult hero is almost a little bit lost in the modern age, but mm. absolutely. He's, he's very, very wholehearted. He is a... He's one of those players that fans will naturally have quite a lot of affection for straight from the off because you'll, you know, his effort and his his contributions are very tangible, very obvious. So I think he has a chance of being very popular. Yeah, totally. The Liverpool fans have been in touch. Um, this is captain of Japan and still got the best tackling stats in the Bundesliga over recent yep. seasons. The end, but last season, five goals, five assists, super fit. He sounds like a clock player. He very much does. He very much hit fits the mould and it's worth just adding to a little bit of context there, Stuttgart were awful last season. They were okay. very, very fortunate not to go down. And so to be impressed in that team, mm -hmm. which also suffered a change of manager halfway through halfway through the season, Sebastian Hernes came in. Uh, so obviously a lot of flux and adjustments and he was still terrific. Also, he's a leader. And if you think about if you think about some of the players that Liverpool have lost this season, obviously Jordan Henderson, but also James Milner going, going down to Brighton on a free transfer. And those are kind of character who can replace those types of people in a dressing room. And obviously you don't, you don't have that kind of gravitas right from the, the from day one when you walk in. But um he's always been admired and um yeah, he's a great family man. He actually uh, he has five children. Um so he um mm -hmm. you know he knows how to he knows how to run a household, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Ryan Gravenberg, I, uh, you know yeah. what? When when I saw that this morning, I thought, hasn't he already signed for Liverpool? There was so much talk about it a month, two months ago, that I thought it was done. But of course, it went a bit quiet. But he does seem to want out of Bayern. It's not worked, has it, for him that move? Definitely not. Definitely not. It hasn't worked at all. It was a. I think even not even in retrospect, I, I don't think it was a very good decision. I think if you look at Bayern's midfield. You also Kimmich, Leon Goretzka, Marcel Savitzer joined last summer as well, uh, the season before last, and you know, that hasn't really worked for him. But Gramberch probably jumped a little bit too high too soon. And he's not really doesn't look like he's, you know, close to getting a game there this season either. So I think he has to move. The one thing I'll say is that I I, I know Gravenberch is a name and I know he comes with the sort of the Ajax reputation. And I'm sure one day he will be a terrific player, but he hasn't done very much yet. And Leaving Bayern Munich for Liverpool, it's kind of sideways as a move in terms of expectation. These are two massive clubs. Mm -hmm. And so it's not it's not really a training ground, is it? It's not somewhere where you can gently relearn the game and, and restore a little bit of ego that was perhaps lost in the Bundesliga. I can see it happening because he's he's very talented. But um just worry if if it hasn't worked at Bayern, why would it necessarily work at, at Liverpool? Don't don't really get that one. So West Ham also looking to do a biz bit of business. They've got money in their pocket, of course, mm. off the back of the Rice deal. Um, and they're going shopping um, Leverkusen. Uh, Jonathan Tarr and Odilon Kasunu are the two players. I mean, Jonathan Tarr's been linked with quite a lot of clubs in the Premier League before and, and it's never made the move. Could it Could it happen this time, you think? Yeah, well, there's certainly, there's certainly some appetite from his side because he said earlier in the summer that he was keen on a, on a move to the Premier League. I was actually at Leverkusen's training camp in Austria and... He told the press there that it was something that appealed to him. Um, we're talking about two kind of very different types of player. Mm. John Tarr has had a uh, a late career. Well, not late career. He's hardly old, but he's had a little bit of a renaissance. He's really re rediscovered his form at Leverkusen last season under Jabby Alonso. Um, but it's probably a bit more of a stopper style centre half. Whereas Casino is, is uh, he is more of an adventurous player. He's more of a kind of an artisan, more, a bit more technical um, will be a very, very good player too. I don't know whether it's a little bit early for him to move because he's not a first choice at Leverkusen. He sits behind uh, Leverkusen player back three and usually with uh, Pierre Henkapier, Jonathan Tarr and Evan Tapsoba as the three. 
um, and he's not always consistently selected within it. So a bit of a leap, but very, very talented. And um, either would probably improve uh, any side that they joined, actually. Most of the sides at that level, certainly. There's been a couple of stories around goalkeepers into Bayern. Yes. David De Gea, mm. um, which seems to have gone a bit quiet um, or uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Maybe they're looking for a number two, a backup. Because no- Neuer and not- De Gea at this... I mean, well, ten, not, ten years ago... Well, he's been injured for ages. It's whether he comes back and yeah. he's fit. He's not far off, apparently, as Seb will tell us. But Stefan Ortega of City has been mentioned for them. I mean... It's always a risk. We don't know what kind of Manuel Neuer is going to come back. They say he's not far off, but will he still be the same player? Well, he doesn't sound that close. I mean, he, he's he been doing kind of anti-gravitational work in the pool and riding exercise bikes, and he's doing a bit of running, but it doesn't sound like he's actually properly involved in first-team training. Mm-hmm. I mean, these latest updates are only a couple of days old, so if we see him before October, November, I'd be very surprised. The trouble, obviously, is that Manuel Nora is still a very good player, but he's also a very powerful figure in that dressing room. So as well as kind of replicating his skill set and what he's able to do as a goalkeeper, you've got to make sure that when he comes back, you don't create a controversy. And let me tell you, like, it doesn't take much to create a controversy at Bayern Munich. Mm. You don't, you know, you, you, there's confected stories every day about Bayern Munich and what's going wrong and what people are, imagine is going wrong. So to actually have a goalkeeping um, rivalry, not particularly helpful. Mm. So I'm not surprised to see the De De Gea stories die on the vine Ortega is much more realistic and interesting just because good goalkeeper has Bundesliga experience he is German he also he's very good with his feet which David De Gea is not as um as Eric Ten Hag found out and Man United fans found out over the years not a very good fit there so Ortega just also feels like someone who might know his place in in the good sense not in the derogatory sense um as and when Neuer returns to definitely become a first choice so you've got to handle that situation well um especially if you're Thomas Tuchel who uh it's not on unsteady ground but it's a little uneasy there at the moment the the battering they took in the in the German Super Cup on Saturday night did not help things for him and he, he said some pretty aggressive things on German TV so um they don't need a chemistry problem, a goalkeeper. Mm. Just finally then, on something that's gone right for Bayern is landing Harry Kane. Yeah. I mean, yes. we've been told that it's it's a big deal for the Bundesliga, a big deal for German football. Is, is it kind of universal hype? Is there a lot of excitement about him playing in the league or is that sort of limited to Bavaria and Bayern fans? Well, I was in Bavaria when it happened. I was in Munich over the weekend and there is a lot of excitement there about it. The number of shirts they sold on day one was extraordinary. The reaction he got in the stadium regards to the result was hugely positive i was in his press conference too when he talked about you know he described it as actually having been magical the, the way that his family and, and he had been welcomed to germany but then the thing is is also that bavaria and germany are not the same place in many ways they're very different um it's very uh there's a very different different attitude different sort of also different footballing success levels clearly uh and time will tell i mean depending on who you speak to some people will say uh, obviously great for the bundesliga to be able to take a top tier player away from the Premier League rather than uh, to see the trend that's been going on for the past decade which is the best German players and best Bundesliga players migrating to England instead Um, I suspect as the season goes on and if Kane is successful which I'm sure he will be um, some of those attitudes might become a little bit more resentful that's natural (laughs) with any kind of sporting rivalry and also in a situation of course where Bayern Munich have won 11 straight Bundesliga titles adding arguably the best forward in the world, probably not going to make it a closer competition. But we'll see. I think um, certainly there's a lot of excitement about seeing him and that's coming from most of the country or, you know, um, as far as I can tell. So we'll see. But that that's one to watch. I don't think there's a... I think that that situation will evolve as the season goes on. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs. Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.